Okay, so imagine, you know, a future where managing HIV, you know, doesn't mean like taking daily medication. Yeah. Is that just a dream or is there like actual progress happening right now in that direction? Well, that's a really great question. And and that's really what's fueling a lot of like the super cutting edge research that's happening right now. Right. And at the forefront of that is a really, really interesting clinical trial called FRESH. Fresh, and we've been kind of digging into the early data right. from this fresh trial, mm -hmm. and it seems to be kind of exploring a totally different landscape, mm -hmm. you know, for HIV treatment. Yeah, um, and that is, like you said, this possibility of controlling HIV yeah. without needing to constantly be on medication. Absolutely. So, for you know, everyone listening out there, you know, who are always, you know, navigating this world of HIV testing information every day. Yeah you know, really getting into like the details and the nuances of this SHA trial. Right. Super important. Yeah, absolutely. So let's break it down. Yeah, let's unpack it. Like, what is this all about? And what do these early results kind of suggest for the future of HIV care? Yeah, I think that's our goal today is to really get to the heart of what this fresh trial is finding and what it could mean for how we approach HIV care in the years to come. Right. Okay. So let's start at the very beginning. Okay. What exactly is the FRESH trial? So FRESH is an acronym. Oh. It actually stands for Females Rising Through Education Support and Health. Okay. And what immediately stands out, I think, is its focus. Okay. Um, this trial was conducted in South Africa, and it really targeted young women who were identified as being at high risk of HIV infection. Got it. But here's where it gets really interesting, is the intervention occurred very early in the course of infection. How early are we talking? Within two weeks of a positive HIV test. Wow. So that's a significant shift from, you know, a lot of the HIV studies that have been done in the past, which often, you know, focus on individuals that have been living with the virus for much longer. Um, and so you can think of it as, you know, trying to put out a small fire before it becomes a, you know, raging inferno. Right. The idea here was, can we intervene super early, you know, before the virus has a chance to really take hold and make a difference in the way that the body responds? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like getting ahead of it, you know, giving the immune system like a fighting chance. Exactly. Okay, so how did they actually go about conducting this trial? Yeah. Like what did the uh, participants actually experience? So they um, employed a very proactive strategy. Um, they had participants undergo HIV testing very frequently. Okay. Twice a week, actually. Wow. To be able to identify these new infections very rapidly. Wow. And once a participant tested positive, they were immediately started on antiretroviral therapy or ART-T. Right. Again, within that two-week window. So that's the standard initial treatment. Right. So what was different about this trial? Right. So the really novel aspect of this trial came after that initial RT period. So for five weeks, the participants received RT, but they also received a combination of two broadly neutralizing antibodies right. or BNABs. Okay. And these BNABs were specifically VRC01, OSO7, and CPT256. Wow. They were also given an immune booster drug called vesetilamod. Okay. And vesetilamod is a type of drug called a TLR7 agonist. Right. And TLR7 is a receptor on immune cells. And so by activating this receptor, vesetilamod helps to stimulate and mature those cells. Okay. Essentially giving the immune system a stronger signal to fight the infection. Got it. So they're using RT to kind of get the virus suppressed quickly, and then they're trying to actively train the immune system right. with these specialized antibodies in this booster. Exactly. Okay, so what happened after these five weeks right. of this combined approach? So after those five weeks of therapy, um, the researchers made a pretty pivotal decision, and they stopped the RT altogether. Wow. And the goal here was to see whether the participants' immune systems, potentially bolstered by the BNABs, and the immune booster could then control the virus on their own. Wow. Just to like stop the RT. Yeah. I mean, what were the results? So the outcomes, I think you can characterize them as mixed. Okay. But with some really exciting and significant findings. Okay. So over the next 48 weeks, roughly half of the women did experience an increase in their viral load and had to restart RT. Okay. However, and this is the really key point here. Okay. Four women in the trial were able to maintain control of HIV without any medication for a remarkable 1.5 years. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, so that's a pretty dramatic departure from the typical treatment path. Totally. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a year and a half yeah. without medication. Pretty incredible, right? That's incredible, okay. Yeah. So, and what about the people who had to go back on RT? Right, so even in those individuals who had to go back on RT, okay. 
the researchers noticed something really interesting. Okay. They noticed fluctuations in their viral load. And that suggests that their bodies were actually mounting some level of an immune response against the virus. Wow. So even though they had to go back on RT, right. their body was still like was still trying to it. fight back. Yeah, exactly. That's really interesting. Yeah. It indicates that this combination of BNABs and these immune boosters has the potential to enhance the immune system's ability to suppress HIV Okay. in certain individuals, p potentially to the point where daily RT might not be necessary. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so you keep mentioning these broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs. Yeah. Can we dive a little deeper into those? Like, what are they exactly and why are they so promising in this context? Sure. So broadly neutralizing antibodies, as their name implies, are a special type of antibody that can neutralize a wide range of different strains of HIV. Sure. So you can think of HIV as this constantly evolving target, right? right? Traditional antibodies might be very effective against one specific version of the virus, okay. but ineffective against others as it mutates. But BNABs, on the other hand, are kind of like a master key okay. that can recognize and block many different you know, locks on the virus, so to speak. Gotcha. So they're not as specific. Exactly. And that's really important because HIV, as we know, is notorious for mutating and evading these therapies. Right. So BNABs offer a much wider net. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so how do they actually work? So their main mechanism of action is they prevent the virus from infecting new healthy cells in the body. Okay. So you can kind of picture it as HIV is like a key trying to get into a lock. Okay. Which is the healthy cell. Got it. BNABs act like a piece of chewing gum okay. that gets stuck in that keyhole, okay. preventing the HIV key from turning and opening that lock. Wow. And so that essentially prevents the virus from replicating and spreading within the body. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay, so why is this approach with the BNABs potentially better than just using RT in the long term? Well, I think the biggest advantage is the potential for long-term viral control with less frequent dosing. So as we know, current RT requires strict, lifelong, daily adherence to be effective. Right. BNABs, on the other hand, could potentially be administered, you know, through infusions or injections. Okay. At much less frequent intervals, like maybe every few months. Wow. And so that could dramatically improve quality of life right. for people living with HIV. Absolutely. And really reduce that burden of daily medication. Yeah. And I imagine like, you know, for people who work in, you know, HIV testing centers and stuff like that. Yeah. That must be like a huge thing that you hear is like. Adherence. Adherence. Yeah. You know? yeah absolutely. And just like the burden of having to take medication every day. Absolutely. So that would be a game changer. Yeah, a huge game changer. Yeah. Okay. So you've also touched upon this idea of a functional cure. Right. How do BNAMs potentially play a role in achieving that? So the idea behind a functional cure is to be able to control the virus without needing daily medication. Okay. Even if the virus is still present at very low levels. Right. And so the results from this Varush trial, I think, really suggest that BNABs, particularly when used in combination with these immune boosting agents like bezetilamide, okay. might really be key to achieving this functional cure. Okay. So by directly targeting the virus and strengthening the body's own immune response, this combination could potentially empower the immune system to keep HIV suppressed naturally. So the body is essentially learning how to manage the virus on its own. That's the hope. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so based on these initial findings of the Fershesh trial, yeah. what are some of the realistic possibilities for the future of HIV treatment? Yeah. I mean, could we really be moving towards a future where daily medication isn't the standard of care for everyone living with HIV? I think the FRESH trial really provides us with a glimpse into that potential future. Okay. Um, the fact that, you know, a subset of individuals in this trial were able to maintain viral control yeah. <laughs> for, you know, such a significant period of time without art suggests that, you know, this approach has real merit. However, it is important to acknowledge the limitations and the challenges that we still face. Right. Um, you know, as we saw in the trial results, not all participants responded the same way. Right. It wasn't a universal success. Exactly. And that highlights the need for more research to really understand, you know, why some individuals experience this profound benefit, right. whereas others did not. Okay. So we need to be able to identify those factors that predict who's going to respond well to this. Right. 
Additionally, the findings from this relatively small trial okay. need to be validated in much larger clinical trials involving a more diverse population. Of course. Um, so it's still relatively early, Okay. but it's a really significant step forward. Right. It opens up these new avenues for research yeah. and really reinforces the idea that harnessing the power of the immune system could be a key component of managing HIV long term. Absolutely. Okay. So let's go back to this idea of an HIV cure for a second. Okay. okay. You mentioned that there's a functional cure and a sterilizing cure. Right. Could you kind of break those down for our listeners? Sure. So a functional cure, as we've been talking about, yeah. means that a person living with HIV can maintain a very low or undetectable viral load oh. without the need for ongoing RT. Okay. So the virus is still present in the body, right? but the immune system is effectively keeping it under control. Got it. Preventing it from causing illness and transmitting to others. Right. A sterilizing cure, on the other hand, would involve the complete eradication of the HIV virus from the body. Okay. And so this is kind of the holy grail of HIV research. Yeah. But it's a much more distant prospect. Right. So these positive results from the Evios trial yeah. are mainly pointing to the possibility of a functional cure. Right. It suggests that a functional cure might be achievable okay. for certain individuals through these interventions that boost the immune system. Got it. And potentially reduce or eliminate reliance on RT. Okay. And what other, like, you know, exciting developments are on the horizon in the field of HIV treatment and research? Yeah, there's a ton of dynamic research going on right now, okay. exploring a lot of innovative strategies right. to improve HIV treatment outcomes. Okay. Um, this includes, you know, investigating new combinations of BNABs, oh. developing more potent and targeted immune modulators, right. and even, you know, groundbreaking approaches like gene therapy. Gene therapy, wow. Yeah. Okay, so for HIV, what would gene therapy look like? So gene therapy for HIV is exploring a lot of really fascinating possibilities. Okay. Um, one approach involves modifying immune cells to make them resistant to HIV infection. Wow. So it's essentially creating a built-in, long-lasting defense. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Straight out of science fiction. It is cutting-edge science. Yeah. Um, another area of research is looking at ways to deliver genetic instructions Got that you. could help the body actively eliminate the virus. Wow. So these gene therapy approaches are still still, you know, in the early phases of development for HIV, but they represent, you know, really revolutionary ways of thinking about how we might treat the virus in the future. Right. And, you know, trials like FreshResh are really what drive these breakthroughs because yeah. they provide us with that essential data that we need to better understand how to prevent and treat and hopefully cure HIV in the future. Yeah. So, I mean, it really does sound like we could be like on the cusp of like a totally different way of thinking about managing HIV. Right. Like one that empowers the body's own defenses mm -hmm. to fight the virus. I think that's a great way to put it. Rather than just relying on like, you know, consistently taking these medications every day. Right. And the STARS trial really offers us this glimpse into that potential future. Yeah. Where daily HIV medication may not be necessary for everyone living with the virus. Right. So it's a really significant step forward, I think, in our understanding of how the immune system can be harnessed to control HIV. And for everyone listening today, you know, especially those of you connected to the HIV RNA test guide community, yeah. you know, it's always super important to know your status. Yeah, absolutely. If you or someone you know has any concerns about HIV. Yeah. You know, early testing is so important. Super important, yeah. You can visit HIVRNATestGuide.com for quick, affordable, and confidential HIV testing options. Yeah, great resource. Um, and there's over 4,500 locations across the United States. Wow. So That's amazing. Yeah, stay informed about the latest advancements in HIV research and treatment. You know, it's a rapidly evolving field. It is. And trials like Fresh et Coche. You know, they offer genuine hope for the future of HIV care. They do. So thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. For this deep dive. It's been great. Thanks yeah. for having me. Of course.